Hello, and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. If you want to travel and go away a few weeks at a time, or maybe even a whole entire year, you want to travel all of North America, well, there's nothing better than doing it in an Airstream travel trailer. The all-new 2019 Airstream International Serenity 30RB floor plan is going to give you the space and comfort you need for those extended travel trips. The 30RB floor plan is 30 foot 11 inches from the center of the ball to the very back of the bumper. The exterior width is 8 foot 5 and a half inches. The interior width is 8 foot 1 inch. The exterior height to the very top of the air conditioner is 9 foot 9 inches. The interior height from the floor to the ceiling is 6 foot 7 and a half inches. The gross vehicle weight rating of this trailer, that's the maximum weight the trailer could ever potentially weigh, is 8,800 pounds. The UVW, or unit base weight, is 6517. That's what the trailer weighs with four factory options, but includes propane and batteries. The net carrying capacity left over is 2,283 pounds of cargo you can put inside this trailer. The dry tongue weight is 898 pounds. This Airstream has a 54-gallon freshwater tank, 38-gallon gray waste tank, a 38-gallon black water tank, that's your sewage tank, and comes standard with a 15,000 BTU air conditioner with heat pump in the galley and a 13,500 BTU air conditioning with heat pump in the bedroom. Let's head right inside. I want to show you what this Airstream has to offer. What a great wide open floor plan this is. Up front we have a 42 inch wide by 79 inch long bed. Uh, this is a sofa position now, but it does slide out into a bed. There's storage below, chair storage on the side, blanket storage behind. The color, the interior color that we're in right now is the salsa. Uh, there are two other choices for 2019. There's Oyster, which is a light gray ultra leather. And there's Espresso, which is a chocolate brown ultra leather. Ultra leather is a very strong material. It's uh, resistant to uh, spills and tears that uh, we've been using for many years. On this side of the trailer, we have a dinette with beautiful windows above. You got Vista View windows up top, two 30 inch windows that open all the way out. But this folds down into a 38 inch by 76 inch long bed. So you could sleep two adults or two kids back here. You could sleep two kids or one adult in this position. This trailer sleeps up to six people. The galley has a Corian countertop, and uh, there's plenty of counter space with a deep bowl sink. You have an option of either getting the standard gas oven with regular microwave, or you could upgrade this to a convection microwave. They'll delete the gas oven, and you'll have additional drawers below. There's an eight cubic foot automatic two-way refrigerator. See the laminate here? This is the Asian sand laminate. This is part of the International Serenity series. This floor plan repeats itself through the International Serenity, Signature, and Flying Cloud. The difference is mostly decor. So the Signature will have a dark ebony laminate. The Flying Cloud will have a gold color laminate. So those are your differences in decor. There are other aesthetic differences and some feature differences as well. There's a slide out pantry here. These shelves are adjustable up and down. There's storage above. There's a privacy curtain that pulls across to give you privacy for your split bath. But they incorporate the wardrobe, very spacious wardrobe, inside of the bath area. You got a toilet with plenty of room for putting on makeup and shaving in this bathroom. It has a window inside and lots of storage. Storage up top here. There's a skylight in the galley, but there's also a skylight in the bath area. It really brightens up this area. And you also have privacy from the back of the trailer by using one of these accordion curtains. In the bedroom, you have an option of either twin beds or queen bed. The twins are 34 inches by 80 inches long. They're all pillow top, memory foam, high quality mattresses. On the queen, it would be 60 by 75. The major difference between twin and queen is the window placement. When you get the twin bed, you get a rear panoramic window, two shirt lockers at the foot of the bed with a nightstand. 
On the queen bed, since you have to be able to walk around it, you have a wardrobe on either side that go floor to ceiling. So you don't get the panoramic window, you get a square window in the middle. And then the bed lifts up for additional storage. Uh, we sell about a 50-50 split, twin versus queen. So you have to decide which is going to be more conducive for your lifestyle. So now I would like to go over in a little bit more detail on how some of the things work inside this Airstream trailer. If you look in the bedroom, there's an overhead roof locker. This is pliable with laminate. There's no particle board. There's no sticker in any of the construction. On the Serenity series, it's, it's uh, trimmed out in extruded aluminum. You got a rice paper style rear upper sliding roof locker. All the roof lockers are backlit on the International Serenity series. And you do have an option to uh, not have that light on, but it'll have the seal lights on in the bedroom. Uh, the 34 inch by 80 inch bed, pillow top memory foam mattress, lays on a Luan board here. Mattress and storage below, comes with these plastic bins on the twin bed model. Premium hardware, you could detach this hardware, you could adjust the angle of it. So if you wanted to put something larger in here that didn't fit, you could actually remove the door, leave the door off, and have duffel bags in here if you wanted. This right here is the furnace duct. It has a 30,000 BTU forced hot air propane furnace on board. Also has heat pumps. You got two uh, heat pumps in the air conditioning. There's a space between the bed and the wall so you could add uh, additional items at the foot of the bed. So if you wanted to store things there, you could do so. This storage compartment has the same plastic trunk. This box right here is actually the rear trunk compartment. So on whether you get a twin or queen, you do get a rear trunk. On the twin bed model though, they split the beds in half and you do get exterior storage on the twin that you don't get on the queen. So you do gain two extra exterior storage compartments. Full extension drawer glides in these wooden box drawers. They all have a J latch to keep them shut. This one needs 10 pounds of pressure to pull that door open. It has a laminate top here in the bedroom. There's USB charge ports on either side of the nightstand. And there's a regular electrical outlet in the middle so you could plug devices in. The middle window opens all the way out. It also doubles as an emergency exit. So this is your second means of egress. You'd pull the two red handles, twist, and then you lift evenly both left and right handles, and you could open the window three different heights. But in an emergency, you'd pull this cord here and release the screen, and you could climb out. Make sure you hold both handles even. You don't want to twist them. And you want to make sure you want to walk through your Airstream when you're done, when you're ready to leave to go to, uh, leave the campground, make sure all your windows are latched. You don't want to leave one of them loose when you're traveling. There's LED directional reading lights over the bed. You got blackout curtains for the full panoramic that goes all the way around. You can unsnap them and undo the caps if you ever wanted to remove them for cleaning. You got a stacked window on this side, so it has a porthole window with an operating window that opens all the way out on the side. At the foot of this bed, we have the thermostat control. This allows you to control all your HVAC devices. You could turn it on and off here. You could change zone. So your rear air conditioner, your front air conditioner are in different zones. The furnace system is on its one zone. You could set programs. Uh, you could change the fan speed in the air conditioner from low, medium, high, or to automatic mode. You could set the clock, um, and you could also see what your temperature is on board. You have a ceiling light switch for your bedroom ceiling lights. The lights in here are dimmable, and there's a switch here for your accent lights in the rear overhead roof locker. In this roof locker, uh, this uh, shirt closet, there's a hanging wardrobe rod with notches in it so your hangers don't slide back and forth. These shelves are removable and adjustable if you decided to. And Airstream constructs all their cabinetry with pocket hole screws. So there's no staples holding anything together. It's all pocket hole screwed, very secure into the plywood, high grade plywood. You have a radius curve here instead of a sharp corner. You can see here the oak that they put on the corner. So if you bump up against this corner, you're not gonna chip any plywood with laminate because it's solid oak. You have a light here for your shower. All the lighting in the trailer is LED. On this side, there's another shirt locker. You could hang clothes if you remove the shelves. You could adjust the heights 
of the shelves as well. The television that's standard on, on board. It's a LED TV on an articulating arm. This is tied into the front standard Blu-ray player, so you can play movies on the Blu-ray player and broadcast back here. There's also an onboard antenna, so you get over-to-air digital reception. And if you go to a campground, there's a cable input, so if you want to utilize their cable television, you you'd plug it in outside and you'd have cable TV inside. There's another stacked window on this side. The top one opens, the bottom one's in a fixed position. And you can really close out these curtains and get a lot of privacy in the bedroom if you want it to. The television's plugged into an electrical outlet down below. That outlet doubles as an inverter outlet. So this has a 1,000 watt pure sine wave inverter on board. What the inverter does is it takes your stored battery juice and you could turn on the inverter and that will take that stored battery juice and invert into electricity up to 1,000 watts. So you could use both televisions and a laptop computer, small electronic devices. Nothing like a coffee maker or microwave or iron that you could use on, on the inverter, but it'd be for small devices. So there's nothing to switch over. When, you know, when you're plugged into the campground, that outlet is live. When you're not plugged into the campground, that outlet is not live unless you turn on the inverter. The inverter will draw from your battery juice. And it's a very important uh, option that's available, and I recommend getting it, would be the solar charging system. Solar charging system gives you 280 watt or 90 watt panels, and it upgrades the batteries from standard lead acid group 24 series interstate batteries to Group 24 series AGM Lifeline batteries. And those batteries are in power all and they give you 12 volt to power. Uh, it is uh, a good option to have so you get some solar gain when you're camping somewhere and you don't have electricity. Pretty much what we're doing right now. This trailer is not plugged into electricity. I have all the lights on and it's bright and sunny out so I'm not draining the battery down while we're here. The privacy curtain snaps it back you want to make sure that's uh, positioned firmly when you are traveling and want this loose up here on the ceiling there's intakes for your rear air conditioner there's another intakes back here for your uh, main air conditioner but there's filters in here you got to change or clean periodically so you got to unscrew them you're going to inspect it clean it if it's ripped you want to replace it but that uh, the very important these get clog very easily from towels from lint from sheets so you want to check them very often if they do get clogged you're going to overwork your air conditioner and you could potentially burn it out there's also ducted air on this airstream it was one of the uh, top design innovations that airstream has done in its uh, history but now we have ducted air since 2015 on a 30 foot so it reduces noise level greatly they call it quiet stream because of that and it ducts air throughout this whole entire trailer. There's no baffle, so if you have the, the main air conditioner on, you still have air conditioning coming back here. Or if you have the rear air conditioning on, it's still ducting all the way to the front. But you could change the direction of how you want the air to flow out of these registers, or you could shut one off completely. So if you want to dedicate more air back here, back up to the front or to the back, you could turn off registers as necessary. The tempered glass shower door has a metal frame, aluminum frame. There's a lock here to keep this door from popping open when you're driving. There's also a magnetic strip that keeps it shut when you're parked. Inside, there's a shower wand that can hang nice and high. Once you get your desired temperature with your high quality Moen diverter, you could pause the shower so you could conserve your water but keep your temperature the same and then turn it back on when you're ready to uh, start flow again. There's a drain plug for the shower pan, very important. There's a P-trap under there. The water could dissipate out of there, dry out. You hit some bumps when you're traveling and you might get some tank odor on board, so it's best practice to keep this drain plug in place. There's a heavy duty splash guard on the back of the shower door to prevent water from splashing out into the hallway. I do recommend leaving a towel down so when you open the shower door, any water that's on it can run down and hit your towel and absorb. This is a fiberglass shower enclosure. The big box here is actually your wheel well, so the wheels cut into the body like the bed of a pickup truck. So Airstream builds a well. You could use that as a ledge or a seat. It's overlapped by three inches, so you don't have to worry about water rolling up and behind the, sh the shower pan. Up top here we have an LED light. There's a little drain in it for condensation just in case there's condensation that builds up inside. There's a clothesline that pulls across. 
locks in place and then you could spin this to keep the slack tight. And this is for light items, bathing suit, washcloth. I wouldn't re recommend hold, uh, hanging anything really heavy here like a towel. And then up top, there's a bathroom fan. You just push up, push the red button, and that will exhaust the steam out of the shower. And you're going to wash it like you'd wash a fiberglass shower enclosure in a residential application. On this side, you can see part of the design of the International Serenity is uh, in, in the window and the door. The Signature Series will have a round porthole window, and some of the other models might have a solid door. But you see the pocket handle here? Instead of having a handle sticking out that you could bump into when you're walking down the hallway and catch your, your belt loop in, uh, they do a pocket handle, which is a nice design. This door opens all the way around if you need it to. Inside the bathroom, we have a high quality Dometic uh, porcelain toilet. When you want to flush the toilet, it's similar to a home except there's no tank reservoir up top. So you'd fill the bowl to your desired height by putting your foot partially on the pedal. Use the toilet and then uh, to flush it, you push all the way down and there's a ball valve that opens that allows the water to drain out. And the longer you hold your foot on that pedal, the more water that will flow through. So you decide how much water you're going to use per flush. You could use anywhere from one or two cups all the way up to a few gallons if you keep your foot on the pedal long. There's storage next to the toilet. There's also a toilet paper holder inside here. There's a shelf. This box portion on the bottom that's not utilized for storage is your wheel well on this side of the trailer. These slide back and there's more storage here. There's another storage compartment up top. And then there's a towel bar on the wall. You can see the duct work in the air conditioning for the air conditioning that goes into the bathroom. There's another bathroom fan on this side to exhaust stale air. Just push a little button. Very important when you go through your checklist, your Airstream checklist before you leave the campground, to pull this down to make sure it's sealed so you don't get water on board when you're traveling in the rain. There's a ledge up here for additional storage. It has an ocean air roller shade for privacy in the bathroom. This is a porthole window so it doesn't open. There's a GFCI protected electrical outlet on board. So in order to use outlets other than inverter outlets, the trailer's gonna have to be plugged into electricity at the campground or into a portable generator that you could purchase and put in the back of your pickup truck. Um, next to that, we have your water heater. The water heater is, gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water. It uses a six gallon reservoir, but it has a mixer valve that preheats the water before it brings it into the tank and then superheats it. So when you turn on the water on the hot tap, it's very, very hot water. So you're going to mix with quite a bit of cold water to get it to a temperature that's comfortable for you. But if you were to put it at the hottest setting, you should be able to get nine gallons of flow through one tank full, which is, that's a lot of water. Uh, but you have an option of running it on either electric or gas. So on would be up, off would be down. Electricity, in order to use electricity, the trailer have to be plugged into electricity. And you have to have enough amperage if you're running both air conditioner and microwave, you might not have enough amperage to run the electric at the same time. So you have to think about that before you turn on all your major appliances if you have enough amperage on board. Not a big deal because there does also run on propane. So you flip this switch up, you would hear uh, the gas valve open, you'd hear it ignite. In about 20 minutes, you'll have hot, really hot water. If for some reason a water heater misfired on gas, that's the only time this red light will come on and would stay on. So um, we do get a lot of tech support calls. You know, I have the water heater on, the red light's not on. What's wrong? Why is it, why is it not working? It actually is working. It just hasn't gotten the water hot yet. So the red light will only come on if there's a problem. Next to that, we have your ceiling light switch, which are LED lights in here as well. It's a laminate countertop here. You got extruded aluminum edge banding that uh, gives you your expansion gap against the wall. Growy faucet, designer faucet, this is all metal faucet. So the big difference between a camping trailer and a travel trailer is the high, higher quality of components on board as well as the build construction. You know, plastic faucet that some RVs use, well that's okay if you're only going to be using it a few times a year. That duty cycle is very low in that plastic faucet. 
But when you go to a faucet like this, this has a high duty cycle that would be used in a residential application that you'd be using every day. Airstream makes sure they use details like this on their travel trailers because they know their customers are using them a lot. Also, we have a very thick stainless steel sink. Well, most RVs would use a plastic sink, which is acceptable if you're going to be using it occasionally. But if you're going to use the trailer a lot, you know, a stainless steel sink is going to be a lot easier to clean. It's going to be more durable. If you drop something in the sink, you don't have to worry about cracking or denting it because this is a thick gauge. Below the sink here, there's a cabinet with additional storage on the corner. This also has the adjustable and detachable hinges if you wanted to do that. And each one of them have his J latch. Just want to make sure that they click in fully before you uh, tow the trailer away. And then there's a mirror here that allows you to magnify or regular a mirror, but there's all different angles. And then there's a little ring towel bar here for your hand towel when you wash your hands. In the hallway, there's a wardrobe. Inside the wardrobe, there's lights, LED lights on both sides illuminate this area. The wireless backup driving camera is standard now for 2019. So it comes with a little monitor that you plug into your 12 volt power port in your vehicle. You turn your parking lights on in your vehicle and that will power the rear camera and you can see everything that's going on not only when you're backing up but when you're driving. So if you're changing lanes and you're not really not sure, did I clear that guy? Is he out of that out of my way? Well if you look in the camera you'll see the guy, this wide angle lens, and you'll know when you when you cleared them and it's safe to uh, pass. So I recommend leaving your parking lights and the camera on the whole entire time when you're driving, as long as it doesn't distract you. Airstream gives you an electrical outlet tester with a GFCI tester. So if you go to a campground, you want to check to make sure that they don't have an open neutral or some of their wires aren't crossed on their wiring on their side of the campground. You can plug this into one of your electrical outlets and you can see exactly if it's okay. If it is, it will lighten the sequence based on the chart here. Colonial Airstream gives you a winterization uh, pose. And uh, here in the Northeast, we do winterize our trailers uh, starting November and uh, protect them if you're not going to be using the trailer from potential uh, freezing of the plumbing. All Airstreams come standard with heated tanks and closed underbellies. So if you want to do some cold weather camping and you get an unexpected drop in temperature, it gets below freezing at night, you don't have to panic and drain your whole system and start winterizing. As long as your furnace is on, that ducts not only air inside your room here, there's radiant heat that comes off the furnace ducts behind your cabinets to protect your plumbing, but then there's ductwork that goes down into your tank chamber, circulates that hot air around your tank, giving you a bit at a 7 to 10 degree threshold of protection against freezing. But when you're done using the trail and you're not going to keep it heated 24-7 and you want to winterize it, below the wardrobe here, these doors open, and you can see there's a water pump here in the back and there's a filter here that, for the siphon side that siphons water out of your fresh water tank through the water pump through all your plumbing. Well you're going to disconnect the feed side and hook on this hose, stick this into a jug of antifreeze and turn on your pump and that will siphon the antifreeze through your system. During our hands-on orientation here at Colonial Airstream, our technician would demonstrate where you go to uh, winterize your trailer and the procedures so you understand how to do it. We also offer all our customers here at Colonial phone support. So if you're trying to winterize it yourself and you have a few questions, you could call in and speak to one of our, our technicians. This side opens up too and you could gain access to some of the plumbing. So Airstream, the attention to detail is great here because a lot of other manufacturers they might have put these uh, access doors here. They'll put a wardrobe floor that has to be unscrewed and lifted up to get to some of this stuff. Which means if a customer drops their trailer off for service, they might ask you to remove everything from your wardrobe so we could get in there. And you got to move out your clothes and your belongings. Well, with this, a technician doesn't even have to go inside your wardrobe. There's access panels below. But you can see the takeoff from your uh, furnace duct, one of them is going straight down into the tank chamber. And the floor here, that now we're down here on the floor, this is uh, vinyl flooring, high quality vinyl flooring. This goes throughout the whole entire trailer. So Airstream builds the shell first. Once they build the shell, they drop it onto the uh, plywood floor. It's a tongue and groove plywood floor. And then they lay down the vinyl flooring. After they lay down the vinyl flooring, they hand carry all these cabinets inside the trailer and fasten them to the interior shell. 
So for a couple of things, the floor goes all throughout, so there's no quarter, uh, quarter round molding holding the floor down. And none of the cabinets have anything to do with the structural integrity of the Airstream travel trailer shell. They're just actually fastened on the inside of the shell. So this trailer is just as strong, complete, as it would be if I took everything out of the trailer, went right through the entry door, because that's how they all came in, right through the door, they'll fit back out the door. Uh, if the trailer was gutted completely, it would be just as strong as it would be uh, as a complete trailer. So that's a, a key feature of an Airstream travel trailer is the structural integrity. This floor also has an anti-wicking substance painted to the whole outside perimeter. So if water did get in the trailer, uh, say you left the entry door open, it was pouring rain, and water got right there at the entry door, it wouldn't go under the floor and wick it through the whole entire floor. It would actually repel it and drip it out the underbelly. There's an owner's bag that comes with the Airstream travel trailer. Inside, there's a whole bunch of owner's manuals, not only for the Airstream travel trailer itself, but a lot of the major components that are inside the trailer, like the microwave and the air conditioning and refrigerator, they have their own manuals they're all put in here. Airstream's also giving out a newbie's guide to owning an Airstream. So it's a really cool book that, uh, from an outside view on how to operate an Airstream travel trailer outside of the Airstream manual that you get. But we believe our hands-on orientation that we offer here at Colonial Airstream is the most important piece of owning an Airstream. Having a technician go through the Airstream trailer for a few hours with you, teaching you everything works inside and out. We also highly recommend, almost insist, spend the night at our dealership after you purchase your Airstream, after you do your hands-on orientation, so you can try everything out before you hit the road and go back home. That way, if there's any additional questions or any challenges that come up, you're still here, or you're on our property, we can take care of it for you. Uh, we, we believe that that uh, is the best outcome for our customer. We also give you uh, some toilet paper. You want to just make sure it's uh, septic tank safe or it says RV Marine safe. Uh, Colonial Airstream gives you uh, some drop-ins for the black tank. So you, you deodorize, deodorize the tank. One little dose, it's like a, almost like a Tide Pod. You drop it into the toilet, flush the toilet, mix with a little bit more water, and that will treat that tank until the tank's full. And once you discharge the tank, you're gonna treat the next uh, load. Uh, it helps deodorize and helps break it down. Above the wardrobe, there's a shelf up top here to utilize for additional storage. The skylight in the bath has a shade and it's a dual pane. So there's inside thermal break. This one has a film on it to give you privacy. The galley one is crystal clear so you can see outside. There's four speakers in this trailer and one subwoofer as part of the sound system. So there's a uh, subwoofer up front with two speakers and then there's uh, two speakers in the back so it's just like a car stereo you could fade it front to rear if you decided to or if you turn on the stereo you'll have sound through the whole, how, the whole entire trailer privacy curtain here pull that one across so you can see what it looks like this follows the track and then snaps in place once you get it lined up Pantry has a little bit of storage down below here, but these shelves are adjustable. You could buy extras if you decided to. You just want to make sure that snaps in nice and tight to the J latch on the bottom. This storage compartment goes all the way back, so you could put a lot of canned goods in there if you decided to. The refrigerator, the eight cubic foot automatic two way refrigerator, has adjustable shelves. There's a light inside when you have the power on. To illuminate this area. It runs on gas and electric and it's automatic. So when you turn it on it's going to go in automatic mode and since we're not plugged into electricity it's going to try to run on gas. I can manually run it on gas if I decided to and turn automatic off or I could let it decide if I um, have electricity or not. It will try to ignite on gas. Uh, for whatever reason if it can't ignite on gas uh, it will shut off and the check light will come on to let you know as a warning that it tried to ignite and it could ignite. Then you would come in, you'd see the check light on and you decide, all right, do I have propane? Do I, did I have the propane on? Did I bleed out the propane? What caused this refrigerator not to ignite? Uh, best practice would be to turn it on and off and try it again and see if it ignites. Uh, and uh, if it doesn't, then you might want to call in for a technician. 
Uh, the temperature for the refrigerator, you could adjust from uh, one through five, five being the coldest. So most of the people think you'd always want to put it on five, the coldest, but that's not always the case. I have customers that camp when it's cold outside and it might be 40 degrees outside. If you put the refrigerator on the coldest setting, you could potentially freeze items on board. So it's based on uh, outside temperature. So uh, you can adjust based on that. So if it's really cold outside, you could do one. If it's really, really hot outside, you could put it on five. You want know, to make sure that the doors are latched in place before you travel. And it's best practice after you're done using the trailer, you have a lot of moisture inside. Well, if you're going to shut the fridge off and remove all the uh, items inside, make sure the door is left open so it could dry out. Otherwise, next time you come back in, it's going to be all moldy. Below the refrigerator, there's a propane leak detector. So this is a gas leak detector. This is a hard wire right to the battery system of the trailer. It's on all the time. It will always monitor air quality. Uh, so if you have a gas leak, gas is heavier than air, it will hover down towards the floor. This will, uh, will alert you at uh, leave the trailer, inspect, make sure your propane is shut off, figure out what caused that propane leak de detector come on. Some of the other things will make this detector go off. Pet dander, aerosol, so you got to be careful if your pet's sleeping by it or if you're spraying something nearby it, that might set it off as well. And there's a little test button here on the bottom that you could test it periodically. Next to that we have your battery charger and fuse breakers. So this has all your breakers for all your electrical components in the trailer labeled here. There's also main GFCI uh, reset. So instead of having a reset right on electrical outlet itself, that whole circuit, that would be your refrigerator, bathroom, kitchen, outside outlet, is all tied into the GFCI. So that would trip and you just push down all the way and up. You could test it with the little uh, white button here on the side. The battery charger on board uh, goes through the converter, converts AC to DC, which would then charge your batteries. All your DC components are uh, 12 volt ATC fuses here, labeled on the side. Uh, if one of those fuses was to blow for whatever reason, there's a red LED light that will illuminate next to the fuse to indicate that that fuse is burnt out. And since uh, it's converting AC to DC and charging the battery, there's some heat that it creates. So there's a little fan inside that will automatically kick on when the temperature gets high and it will vent out of the bottom. And this is a multi-stage battery converter charger, so it's not always full blast on your batteries. Uh, it's multi-stage, so it goes low, medium, high. There's a television in a fixed position here in the galley. Beautiful vista view windows with shades. These shades are under tension, so you could have them partially down or partially up if you decided to. And it really blocks out a lot of light. I like the light coming in. You have a 30 inch wide window with privacy shade here. Again, all the windows that open do have insect screens. The cushions are removable. They, they get held into place as furniture using Velcro. But you can see the quality of the stitching, the foam density is high quality on an Airstream trailer. So when you sit down, you don't bottom out on the bench. But to make this into a bed, what you do is you flip the bottom cushion up Okay, you lift the table and you can see the cleats here in the wall. You release the cleats from the wall, then you push down on this button and releases the leg. The leg locks in, the table swings down, lays on top of the two benches. There's a little rubber grommet here to keep it in between. And then what you do is you slide the bottom cushion forward and the backrest down and you squeeze them all together and it makes into a decent sized bed. So two adults could fit here if you really want to get in there tight. It's pretty cozy. And to get it back up, you just flip them up out of the way, flip the table, make sure it's in both cleats. You don't want one out and one in. Drop the leg and then reassemble your cushions. Below the table, there's an electrical outlet, so you can plug in uh, electronic devices. It's a regular electrical outlet. This box here is 
is where the water heater is. So the water heater we controlled from in the bathroom. That's what's boxed in underneath here. There's an access panel to get to it for winterization. So there's a low point drain and a bypass built in that you would want to get to from there. On the International Signature and Serenity Series, the dinette is more of a piece of furniture with uh, aluminum legs on a flying cloud be boxed in and be wrapped in the dwell material. On the Signature and Serenity, you get some plastic bins on either side. And the subwoofer is hidden right there in the corner. On this side of the trailer, we have cooktop ventilation. There is a louver on the outside you have to unlatch in order for it to vent outside. There's a light over this cooktop area. It's an LED light. The stainless steel cover here lifts up, folds back, and drops down in a groove. You got very heavy duty grates here and they're sealed so if you spill it's not going to drip down below. And to operate the cooktop, you just select which burner you want on. So the front would be your high output. You put it to light and you spin the spark. Each one of them will have a spark ignition. Whatever one you have turned on will ignite. It's also a good way to bleed the propane system out. So why would you need to bleed the propane system out? Well, I just switched bottles or I just turned on the propane. It hasn't been on for a while. There might be a little air gap in there. You go to turn on your refrigerator or furnace or the water heater, it might misfire. This is the best way to turn it on, get the air out of the system. Once you see a solid flame, you don't hear the air anymore, you could shut it off and then turn on your devices. Oven down below. This is adjustable rack. Uh, every, all the cooking would be from here up. Broil will be down below. But you'd spin it the pilot on. You hold that in for 10 seconds. You light it at the pilot here, dead center in the back. After it lights, you're gonna hold it in for another 10 seconds to heat up the thermocoupler, and then you turn it on. And it gets hot pretty quick and uh, very efficient. I use my oven and my Airstream every single day. I, bring it, I drive it to work, I don't use microwaves. So when I heat up my lunch, I'll put it right in the oven. I think it's a very val valuable piece of equipment in an RV. Down below, there's storage, and uh-oh, wait, this one doesn't go back far. Well, that's all right. Airstream uh, wants to utilize every storage possibility that they could have. So since there's some furnace ducts and, and uh, the actual furnace component behind here, uh, instead of just putting a solid door here, there was some room, uh, so they did give you some storage. So that's one of the things that Airstream does that you don't see in other manufacturers. They'll utilize every possible inch of storage. And believe me, customers find stuff to put in here. These cutouts here are for your intake for your furnace, which is housed underneath. You have a flip down here and a full drawer here. They give you a silverware organizer as well. Uh, again, we have regular microwave or convection. This is the regular uh, microwave if you get the gas oven. It has a uh, carousel that spins around. Solid surface countertops. Storage below the sink area and it comes with a trash pail and they even route out a groove that keeps the trash pail in place so it doesn't roll around when you're driving. I'll give you an extension here that flips up. So if you're uh, preparing food, you have the entry door open and you want to uh, pass food out, you can just put it here on this ledge. Put these two latches that unlocks it and brings it down. Below, you have a magazine rack and a fire extinguisher. So this is built to all the safety codes. We got smoke, fire, carbon monoxide, emergency exit, and tempered glass. Uh, those are uh, some of the things that you'd be looking for in an RV for safety. This is a plastic cover here. You could use as a cutting board, but it's a sink cover. Gives you more space. Steel queen, stainless steel deep bowl sink. So it's very easy to wash uh, pots and pans in here because you get the amount of space that you have. High quality growy faucet with, with a pullout. There's a ocean air roller shade behind the kitchen sink area for privacy. This has the optional solar charging system. So this has the solar, the Sun Explorer 2 display. So you can see how much battery percentage you have remaining, how much battery voltage you have just by pushing the select button. Solar voltage, solar charge amps, your solar amp hours, and your charging status. So the red 
shows that we're, we're actually charging right now. We're running off of solar. You can, all, you can also turn on your inverter from here. So you just push the little button. You hear a little bit of noise, a little fan that comes on underneath the sofa. And uh, in about 10 seconds, you'll have power going to your inverter circuit outlets. And those are all labeled. They'll say inverter on it. It's best practice to shut this off whenever you're done using it. If you leave it on for a long period of time, it still drains the battery, even if you don't have something plugged in. So it'd be best practice to shut it off and leave it off. You have lights over your uh, sink area, and you have overhead roof locker light switch here as well. GFCI protected electrical outlet. C-Level 2 tank monitor allows you to monitor how much battery percentage you have. It's 12.3. Fresh water, we're at zero because we're, the trailer's winterized right now, but this will go up in percentage based on how much water. And it is a 54 gallon fresh water tank, so there's plenty of water on board. Uh, gray and black tanks, your gray is your sink and shower waste, it's 38 gallons, and that's at zero percent. Your black tank is also 38 gallons, and that's at zero percent. Black tanks it takes a long time to fill and register on board. If you use the trailer for several days, it might not even register at all if you have flushed the toilet several times. Because each time you flush the toilet, you're only using a small amount of water. So if you picture a five gallon bucket and how much water or waste you'd have to utilize to fill that five gallon bucket. Once the tank gets over that level, that's when we'll start registering here. That's a lot of waste. The pump system, you're going to use the water pump when you're not hooked up to city water connection at a campground. So you can utilize your 54 gallon fresh water tank, fill that up and go camp out for a few days. But you have to turn on your water pump. And what the water pump will do is that when it turns on, it will pump up the system to pressure and then it will shut off. And then every time you turn on a faucet, it will see a drop in water pressure and automatically kick on the pump. It's a demand pump. Uh, it's always best practice to shut the pump off when you're done using it and never leave it on when you're towing the trailer. When you're hooked up to a campground city water connection, there's a check valve built on the water pump. It bypasses the water tank so you don't fill up your fresh water tank and just supplies water to all your plumbing fixtures. In that particular situation, you don't need the pump on because you're running off of the campground's water pressure. And the trailer has a water pressure regulator built into it to protect you from high spikes in water pressure. Say at night when no one's showering, the water pressure gets high. You're protected whenever you hook up to the city water connection in an Airstream travel trailer. A lot of other manufacturers, it's an extra device you have to buy to protect your trailer. Airstream protects you. Overhead roof lockers here have sliding doors. They slide over each other. They uh, have uh, LED light inside and a very deep lip here. Up front in the lounge, there's a battery kill switch here. So it's a best practice whenever you're in the trailer, using the trailer, to turn it on to use. Whenever you're done with the trailer, shut each and every device off and then put it down to store. So that will shut everything off except for your solar charging system, electric hitch jack, and your propane leak detector. Those things will still be active. Before you plug the trailer into electricity or your, your tow vehicle, it's best practice to turn it to use. Now will turn on your trailer and allow it to charge off your seven-way lead or charge off a campground's uh, power cord connection. Next to the lounge here, we have a GFCI protected regular electrical outlet. We have lighting for your accents in the cabinets, spotlight over here, your ceiling light switch, which uh, the lights are dimmable on board, awning light switch, so there's a rope light built into the body of the trailer underneath the awning that you could turn it on to illuminate the space underneath the awning, and you can also dim that down if it gets a little bit bright for you. And you're able to uh, control your ZIPD Relax Power Awning, which is standard for 2019. In addition to the, the backup camera being standard for 2019 and the Power Awning, on an International Signature and Serenity Series, you do get the Window Awning Package. It's a three-piece kit from ZIPD. That's standard as well. Still optional on a Flying Cloud. The Power Awning is also not available on a Flying Cloud as standard or optional. So if that's an item that you wish to get, you want to make sure that you select either International Signature or Serenity. To operate the awning, you just turn the awning on first. That boots up the system. And then you hit open uh, or close, depending on what you want to do. And you can tilt it front and rear if you decided to. There's, uh, reading, there's lights here, accent lights that are LED on either side of the sofa. This area is left open, so you can store things in here. It's a great space for folding chairs. They fit right in. To fold this and slide this out into a lounge as a gaucho style, this slides out. 
each side supports up to 250 pounds. So just on this little area here, you could put 500 pounds of weight. What you do is you take the backrest, slide it in, and now you have a bed up front. And this goes almost the whole width of the trailer. It's almost 80 inches. So it's about the same, uh, it's a little bit wider and about the same size as the rear twin beds. And there's a wedge up against the back uh, that allows you to have the angle instead of it being straight up and down. Below that, there's storage. This flips down. There's plastic bins that come with the Airstream trailer. So what's nice about this, you could take it, bring it in the house, load it all up, carry it right into the trailer, and put it away, and now it's stored. There's another storage compartment here that goes halfway because the other side is an outside storage compartment. So you get inside outside storage on the, on the lounge. This cushion lifts up here and there's an access panel that a technician could get to if they ever have to work on your inverter system. But this is all routed out on their CNC mach machine. If you notice too on an Airstream, this is, this is finished here. What the cushion lays on is finished and laminate. So it's not just bare plywood. This is your inverter outlet uh, for the front. So if you want to sit on your laptop computer and plug it into electricity, you turn the inverter on. This outlet uh, would be one of those inverter outlets. So there's several next to each TV, the Blu-ray player, and next to the lounge here. There's two speakers, an overhead roof locker over the sofa. There's blanket storage behind. So say all the bedding, when you're done, you want to put it away, you can roll it up. It goes into this very deep pocket here. It's got an ABS plastic well, so it's easy to wipe out and clean out. This front window opens all the way out. There is a rock guard since it's the front of the trailer, it has to be open first. There's a microphone because the stereo here is uh, Bluetooth comp compatible, so you could sync it with your phone and you can answer phone calls and speak commands through it. This stereo system uh, plays uh, CDs, Bluetooth. This is your Blu-ray player slash CD player. It has a USB input in the front so you can plug devices in and broadcast through. There's USB charge port next to it, so if you just want to charge devices. There's another USB here that allows you to plug devices into the stereo system. There's an inverter outlet uh, for these devices that uh, everything's plugged into already. The stereo has a detachable face, so you can take the face off and put it away in its little storage compartment if you wanted to. Since it's a car stereo and someone might utilize this in their car, that might be a feature or something that's important to them in that application. And the trailer, I, I believe you just leave it in place. And then the remote controls for your Blu-ray player and the front TV as well as the stereo are housed up here. On the ceiling we have a fantastic fan. This fan has a motorized lid, variable speed control, thermostat, quick re release, and a rain sensor. So if it rains, there's a little sensor there, a raindrop hits it, it'll actually shut the lid down. Once that sensor dries, it will lift back up. So you can have the lid open as a vent, but have the fan shut off if you want it. If you don't want to drain any battery, it'll still open and close when it rains. So the whole procedure for this, we demonstrate in our orientation to understand how it works. Let's head outside. I want to show you what Airstream has to offer on the exterior now. Airstream hand makes these screen doors. It's all aluminum. It's TIG welted. You get screen door guards. This swings around and snaps in place. This fills up the gap here. You can see there's an extruded aluminum structure that the entry door and the screen door get fastened to. It's all uh, TIG welded here. On the bottom, there's grip tape. So when you exit the trail, you don't slip out. There's a angled piece here that allows you to sweep the floor out so there's no ledge to, for dirt to get stuck on. The entry step, you could fold it up by lifting up on the bottom step, tuck it up, swing it all the way around, put it right in place. It's flush right to the underbelly so it doesn't stick out or get caught on anything. To get it out, you can kick it or put one finger on it. When it comes out, it locks in place on both sides to get the other leaf out. You pull from the back and flip it around. The screen door, when it's uh, shut, has a gasket that keeps it tight. You can see there's an 
aluminum grab handle here. This is all buck riveted in place. Each entry door takes about eight man hours, one whole entire shift for one person to make a door each day. You see at the top of the door, there's an extruded aluminum gutter rail here to prevent sheathing rain from flying down. It will bring it around the door to give you a little bit more protection. On the International Signature and Serenity, you get a porch light over the door with aluminum housing. Entry door is insulated with the same equal bad insulation that the whole entire Airstream shell is insulated with. It's a little, much better than a fiberglass insulation or a styrofoam insulation. It doesn't off gas. So when you go in an Airstream on a very hot day, a brand new Airstream, it's not going to burn your eyes and hurt your throat like you'd see in some other types of RV products. Has a heavy duty deadbolt lock, heavy duty handle, entry door handle lock. So there's two different keys for each trailer. Each trailer is keyed differently, so it's not a repeating key. So that means that uh, no other RV owner can get in your trailer using their generic key. Entry door has a window on it, has that signature vault shut. When you open the entry door again, now the screen door will snap and reattach to the entry door. So uh, it's pretty handy. And it's curved to the body of the trailer. It's made the same uh, radius curve. There's a uh, heavy duty aluminum hinges here on the entry door. Each one's handmade, or each of a work of art. You have porthole windows here over the kitchen that we saw from the inside. There's a latch here to keep the door from swinging around on a windy day. Once you swing it around, it will lock in place. The Alcoa aluminum body, you wash and wax it uh, periodically in the recommended schedule. There's a underbelly wrap here that transitions to aluminum underbelly. So this is fully enclosed, insulated underbelly. So if you look under the trailer, it's the same type of aluminum. It goes all the way around. Instead of buck riveted, it's pop riveted, so it can be drilled out to get in for service access. There's an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. The furnace exhausts right here, so you want to keep this hot air away from maybe kids that are playing, or if you're parked next to combustibles, you got to be careful. You have extruded aluminum wheel well trim. The tires are, are Goodyear Endurance tires. They're low range E, so they're rated up to 80 PSI, 80 miles an hour. They're 225.75, and the rim is uh, 15 inch. You have uh, aluminum rims here, uh, beautiful rims. You want to check your lug nut torque periodically, but if you ever remove the tire, you want to follow a recommended lug nut torque after 10, 25, and 50 miles. Lug nut torque for each trailer is in the owner's manual. It's very important to check that. Very important to check your tire pressure and inspect your tires before each and every trip. Uh, it's one of the things that you want to put on the very top priority of your travel uh, checklist. There's a shock absorber each wheel. This has a, a Dexter door torque to rubber torsion axle system, has never lube hubs, and, and this also has never adjust braking systems, self adjusting braking system. 54 gallon portable freshwater tank has a, a little compartment that opens here. It's a 751 key to get inside. You take the cap off, stick the hose that Colonial gives you loose inside here, turn the water on low, and that will fill that 54 gallon freshwater tank. There's a, a overflow here on the side and also allows the air to escape the tank. When you're done, you close the cap, close the door. You could drain it down. There's a drain valve behind the wheel here that you twist to drain that tank down. There's also low point drains as part of your winterization underneath the trailer. The compartment here on the side are lockable. These are uh, squeeze locks, so when you push down on it, it actually squeezes the lock in place, so it keeps that door nice and tight. But there's two here, and you get these are only when you get the twin bed. There's one on this side and one on the other side. And there's a rubber mat on the floor. It protects your vinyl floor inside. It's all finished on the inside. There's also an LED light on board, but it's insulated, weather sealed, and lockable. Very important. There's stabilizer jacks all four corners of this trailer. The manual stabilizer jacks. On the other side, there's a tool that uh, I'm going to show you. You crank down the jacks. That will take that bounce out of your walk when you're walking around inside the trailer. It's not meant to level the trailer, it's just meant to stabilize it. Beautiful cast aluminum taillight housing with uh, LED lights. You got LED ro ro uh, running lights up top. Another rear trunk compartment. 
This one's much deeper and goes the whole entire width of the trailer. It's also lighted as well. Rear bumper, beautiful aluminum polished rear bumper with storage. Just lift the lid up. There's a storage compartment down here so you can put blocks of wood, wheel chocks, anything that might have ground contact that gets a little bit dirty. Instead of putting a nice clean trunk, you can put it in your rear bumper storage. Standard Zip D window awning package has sunbrella awnings material. The Signature and Serenity have different color awnings. So Signature will be a slate gray uh, as well as a flying cloud. And the Serenity will have this uh, design and color. Just pull down on it, swing the arm all the way around on both sides and roll it up when you're ready to travel. It's metal wrapped, so if you scuff up against a tree branch, you're not going to rip your awning open. Beautiful Airstream lettering here, raised lettering on the outside. There's a wireless backup camera up top there. Panoramic window is tinted slightly. Stabilize your jacks, all four corners. Well, this is uh, the tool that comes with the trailer. It's a three quarter inch, so you can use a cordless drill with a socket if you wish. Stick that on, crank it down. And if you want to increase the surface, you could buy leveling blocks or blocks of wood to put underneath. But they're pretty easy to bring up and down. It happens pretty quickly. There's a waste hose storage tube next to the jack on this model. So Airstream gives you a premium waste hose. I have it stored in here. It's 10 foot long, but the tube's big enough to put an extension on for another 10 foot. So you could put 20 foot total in most tubes. On the end that goes into the campgrounds receptacle, Colonial gives you a rubber donut, a clear elbow with a three step adapter. So if the campground threads aren't stripped, you could screw this in to three different sizes. If they are, you can put the donut in first, slip the hose into it, then snap your waste hose on. And when you come over to your waste gates here, you have a handle for that's black and a handle that's gray. Handle that says main holding tank and the handle that says auxiliary wash. The auxiliary wash in gray is your gray tank. Main tank and black handle is your black tank, which is toilet. It's best practice once you take the cap off, snap the waste hose on, make sure it's firmly secure in the campground's connection. You're going to pull and straight out your black tank. Any solids or toilet paper, any debris inside the black tank now goes through your hose. You might get some areas that uh, it, it sits. So once you're done emptying the black tank, close it, open the gray tank. Now your soapy shower water and sink water will wash out your waste hose, any debris that's left inside. So when you go to put it away, it's a lot cleaner. And when you're done with that, you close it. This trailer, to take it one step forward, these handles and the waste system for draining is gravity fed. Well, Airstream builds in a high pressure black tank flush on each and every one of their trailers. After you empty the black tank, if you're going to put the trailer away in storage, leave it open and you're going to come back here to what says uh, sewer flush, you're going to take the cap off and you're going to not use your nice white drinking hose, you're going to use a regular garden hose, hook that up, turn the water on, and inside the tank there's one under pressure, it'll spray the walls of the tank down and get all that residual waste out. And then once you're done, you shut the water off, close it, and you got a clean tank, you don't have to worry about tank odor while it's in storage. Very important not to get these two things mixed up. One is a sewer flusher, the other one is your city water connection. So I showed you on the other side your potable tank, 54 gallon fresh water tank. Well, if you're gonna to go to a campground, take the fresh water hose, hook it up to the campground's water spigot, hook it right into the cap here. Now when you turn on your faucet, you're running off of their water, city water pressure, and this has a water pressure regular built right into it. Once you're done with the uh, emptying the waste, it's best practice to take the sewer hose off, lift up high, any water that's in it, let that drain down into the campground's waste system. You don't want to wear rubber gloves doing this. Then you, I'm going to snap the waste hose and you can store it away 
in the tube. Make sure this cap's on nice and firm. And you can put this in a big Ziploc bag and you can put it away in storage. And you want to put your cap back on. By the way, this has a LED light outside which illuminates this area. So if you have to do it at night, you're able to see what you're doing. This tool right here is to operate the window awnings. So if you can't reach the little strap, you're going to pull it down with this. And then the side awnings, it has a travel latch. And you can utilize this tool to twist that travel latch in place. And you can also operate the other awning using it. This trailer, 30 foot, has two air conditioners as standard, so it's a 50 amp service. So it's a really thick, big uh, four prong power cord. So there's uh, two hot leads, a neutral, and a ground. So if you go to a campground, you plug right into their 50 amp service, you can both run both air conditioners at the same time. You might go to a campground and they only have 30 amp. Airstream gives you this adapter with each and every one of the 50 amp trailers. You plug it into your power cord, it terminates one of the legs of power, and now you have three prongs. You can run 30 amp. With this adapter, you cannot run both air conditioners at the same time. Colonial then gives you another adapter. So if you want to plug the trailer in at home just to charge it or use, and you don't have a 30 amp, we give you this adapter that brings you down to a regular 20 amp or 50 amp electrical outlet that a residential home would have. With this adapter, you cannot run any of the air conditioners. So you get all these little adapters for the power cord. There's also different accessories you could buy. You could buy just a short adapter. It goes right from here, right down to 20 amp or right to 30 amp without having to drag your whole power cord out. So that's up to you if you decide to go that route. There's an outside utility shower. Use your 751 key to open that. We have it open. You can bring the handle out and hang it on its wand, hot, cold. Uh, something you want to make sure you don't forget to do when you winterize. The pink right now, right here, you, you see, is the non-toxic antifreeze that we just winterized this trailer with today. Forward to that, you have your re refrigerator ventilation compartment. So there's a drip tube that there's a pan inside the refrigerator for any condensation that allow it to drain outside. This is all lined in aluminum and caulked, so if it does get moisture inside, it's not going to wick inside the trailer. I would never recommend hosing it out. It's just for any moisture that does get in there, you are protected. There's a little bit in there now. And there's an insect screen on the back. Up top on the roof, there's a dome vent. That's the part of the refrigerator ventilation system. Allows the refrigerator to ventilate properly. There's a lot of heat that the refrigerator cause, uh, creates when you're on propane or electricity. So you want to make sure that it's vented properly and Airstream takes care of that. Some of the other floor plans of trailers, smaller trailers, might have two of these grates here and not a roof grate because there might be a microwave or a device under, above the refrigerator. Well, then they would have a fan that uh, automatically comes on to circulate air behind the refrigerator. Right in front of the wheel, on the front and back on this wall, because there's two air conditioners, there's a drip tube. So any condensation that the air, air conditioning creates, instead of running down the roof and the side of the trailer, it goes through a drip tube, and you have a steady stream of drip here on a hot and humid day. So you want to make sure that you don't mistake that and think that you have a water leak. It, it's probably your condensation dripping out. If you go to a campground, you can hook into their cable right here. So you buy a coax cable out, outdoor grade. You, hook, you get about 20 foot, hook it from their cable right into the trailer. There's also a connection for satellite. So if you can buy a portable satellite dish, you bring your receiver with you. You might need an HDMI splitter. You hook that up inside the trailer and you can have a portable satellite dish outside. So they give you both connections on the Airstream trailers. This is the water heater access door that flips down. There's a drain plug in here that you'd put in the water heater to allow it to fill. When you turn the switch on and the gas, it allows gas to flow through this valve. It opens, mixes with combustible air, ignites, and the excess heat and exhaust comes out up top. You don't want to hide or store keys in here or anything that could melt, uh, so it's not a compartment. And there's a pressure relief valve. If the tank ever got too high in pressure, we relief out of this right here. Uh, so that's a safety device so the tank doesn't explode. 
LED running lights on the side of the trailer. On the 30 foot, they give you side running lights. There's a front storage compartment underneath the lounge that goes back pretty far and up pretty far. So the hitch sway system that most people buy with the tra trailer, you could get that in there, the sway bars in there if you decided to, or an extra hoses. There's a VIN plate that shows you a production date, the model that it is, the VIN number, tire size, tire pressure. Uh, all your uh, important information is here on this sticker. If you have any questions, you can always look over here as a reference what tire and tire pressure you need. This has stainless steel wrap protectors up front. It's on a piano hinge here on the side. Why would they do that? Well, the stainless steel wrap protectors gapped from the aluminum body. Aluminum body is soft, so if you kick up rocks, it could dent. Stainless steel is a little bit more resilient. Stainless steel is pretty heavy. So we only use it on the rock guard portion. They leave a gap here so you can get some deflection. So if you hit some debris, it's not going to dent the body behind it. Well, since there's a gap there, well, now debris could get back there. So you could take these three nuts off and you can swing the rock guard out and clean leaves and debris out from behind. The solar stone guard has tethers. that allows you to unlock it so you can lift it and lock it in place using a neural knob on either side. You want to make sure that this is secured properly when you're towing. But well, now that it's up, it gives you access. There, you take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn these a quarter turn, this unsnaps. It's on a slip hinge. You could slip it off and clean your glass. I would never recommend towing the trailer without these on. You have a potential risk of shattering your curved safety glass, which is very expensive to replace. Up front, we have uh, two 30-pound propane bottles. Colonial will fill those bottles for you as part of our prep. The bottles are held down by the bottle cover. There's a threaded rod here with a, a nut that you unspin, and that will loosen the bottle cover, which will then loosen the clamp. So once you undo this all the way, bottle cover will lift off. You got to be careful. It's lightweight, so if it's windy, it's going to blow away. But then you can undo the clamp here, and you can undo your bottle, and you can take a bottle out and get it filled. The propane tanks have an automatic switch over, so right here in between the bottles, you could point, there's an arrow on this that points to whatever bottle you want on. You turn that bottle on, uh, bleed out the propane, you'd see that go to green. And then what you could do is you could turn on your other bottle. When this bottle's empty, automatically, internally, it will switch to this bottle. When the bottle's empty that it's pointed to, it will turn red. Even though it automatically switched to this bottle, it'll show you red to whatever it's pointed to to indicate which bottle is empty. I find most customers only turn on one bottle at a time and they don't utilize the automatic switchover because they want to physically know when they're out of propane. Uh, and they want to manually switch it over to the next bottle so you can take that one out and get it filled. That's up to you. Just make sure that you secure your propane tanks properly, nice and tight, get the cover on. Make sure the cover is not pinching any wires up front. Put the clamp on securely. And then there's a tether on the back of it that locks the cover down when you're towing. Up front, we have an electric hitch jack. You can extend which is raise, retract, which is lower, the hitch jack. It runs off the battery system. It's hardwired. There's a light out here to illuminate this area at night. There's a bubble level up top, which will get you close to see if you're close to level. And there's a manual override tool that the trailer comes with that allows you to raise and lower the height of the trailer just in case you had battery failure. Seven-way trailer cord is required on your trailer. Uh, tow vehicle, so you have a receptacle you plug this into. Your vehicle will need an electric brake controller on board and it's highly recommended to have a 12 volt charge lead, hot lead, go into the trailer. The trailer has a breakaway cable. You'd fasten this securely to your tow vehicle. If the trailer was to come detached from the uh, tow vehicle, this would pull out and lock the brakes in the trailer. You never want to use this as a parking brake. You never want to pull it out and leave it out for a long period of time because it will rapidly discharge your batteries. It could also burn out the magnets on the brakes themselves. 
Colonial gives you a hitch lock with each one of the each one of the travel trailer purchases. Put the key in, spin it around, unlock it, and then you could slide your coupler forward and up to unlock it. You have 11,000 pound safety chains you want to crisscross. If they're too loud, low to the ground, when you hook them up to your tow vehicle, you could twist them to take the slack out. Just want to take too, too much slack out, you got to be able to turn. Back behind the propane tanks, we have your batteries, which are in a lockable box. Colonial gives you a lock for that. These are your absorbed glass mat batteries as part of the solar charging system, clamped down, and they're in parallel. There's uh, the feed for your electric hitch jack here, and the electric hitch jack fuse is housed in this compartment. There's a propane quick disconnect port. So if you wanted to use a portable barbecue grill, Airstream gives you this uh, propane quick disconnect port. So you have to remember, it's for low pressure grills only. So you want to check the compatibility with the grill you're about to use to see if it's compatible with low pressure. A lot of high output grills are, need high pressure, so you'd have to hook them directly up to a propane tank themselves. But if you want to utilize this and you have the right grill, you'd hook this end into the grill. There's a quick disconnect port here under the trailer. You slide the collar back and lock that in place and you turn the gas valve on. On this side of the A-frame, which is, this is a steel frame, it's boxed, it's not a C-channel, it's very rigid. It's black spray paint, so you can touch it up easily. You're going to take the little weather guard off, and if you buy a ZAMP portable panel, you can plug it right in. The panel itself would have its own controller on board. This will disable your onboard solar charging system. It will utilize the ZAMP portable panel if you decide to buy one uh, through parts. Uh, you would use that in a situation where your trailer might be in shade and you don't want to move the trailer. You can position the portable panel and get some solar gain and plug it right in. But it's either or system. If something's plugged in here, the system on board is shut off. The spare tire, it's a full size spare tire. Instead of aluminum rim, it's a steel wheel. You're going to pull this clip out, slide this pin across, swing the arm down, and your spare tire is right underneath. You can lift your electric jack up. It gives you a little bit more access to the tire. And the tire is cradled in place. It's not clamped in place. So there's no clamps to undo. Uh, you want to make sure before you travel that you not only check your regular tire pressure, you want to check your spare tire pressure because there's going to be occasions where if you, when you need it, you might not have enough air in the spare tire. So it's best practice to check that as well. Bring it back up, swing the arm up. Lock it in place, put the pin in, and you're set. I'm going to show you the Zip D power awning. Saw the controls inside. I'm going to turn it on, hit open. Use your discretion. If you have heavy winds through the area or a storm on its way, you don't want to leave the awning out. It's always best practice to put the awning away before you leave the campsite for the day. So if you're gonna go out hiking or biking, just press the button and put the awning away. You can see the awning, there's a motor here, and there's a motor on the end of the roller wheel. It will lift the awning out and spin the wheel at the same time. There's a motor on the back part as well. I have the LED lights on on the body. I could dim those down if I wanted to. Once the awning's set, it will stop. That's at the even. Then you could take it and you could tilt the front if you wanted to. Or you could tilt the back. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a brand new 2019 Airstream International Serenity 30 RBT rear bedroom twin. I'm Patrick Botticelli. You can find me on Facebook. I'm Colonial Patrick. Our telephone number at the dealership is 800-265-9019. Our website is colonialairstream.com. I'll see you soon.